Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am your girl Tierra Griffin. I am your life builder and I'm here to help you create the life that you love while remaining totally submitted unto Jesus Christ. I am also have been given the purpose to help bridge the gap between mankind and God to have a relationship with him and to know him as Abba. Um, I'll tell my story about how God gave me that purpose on another video, but today is going to be a chill video. If you don't know, last Tuesday, I put out a video and I said, I want to do bonus videos. You know, something throughout the middle of the week to just add some flavor to your life. I wanted to kick a little flavor in your life. Um, so that is what these videos are going to be for. I'm going to try to do them on Friday or Saturday, but do not hold me to that. Just know they're going to be a midweek video. Uh, it's just something fun, light, you know, nothing too heavy in like my teachings, which is fun things that I learned, maybe tips that I have learned, um, you know, how I dress, my fashion and different things like that. So just stay tuned. Thank you for those that have subscribed. And if you have not done so yet, please subscribe to this channel and join the family. Like we are a dope fam okay we dope over here so yes yeah, sit back relax and let's get into the video for today so today i will be sharing with you four books that i read that totally revolutionized my life and my walk with christ there was a saying if you're in a place of your life where you can't travel the way that you want to getting lost in a good book is what you may need i love books and i haven't read like i you know am supposed to or how I used to read, but I want to get back into that. And I want to encourage you to at least read one book a month for the entire year and watch how your vocabulary expands. Watch how your desire for reading will expand. I know some people don't like to read, but there's so much in book. There's so much information in books that we do not have access to because we do not read. I've read books on how to develop my business, how to grow my walk with God, how to grow my prayer life, how to grow more in God. Um, my really estate business I have so many books how to grow my relationship with the Holy Spirit and how to grow my business I have so many books see the thing about it is we go to school like if you want to be a doctor you would go to school you would get all their books in order to be greater in that profession how to pass your courses and how to take the test and learning all that 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 industry needs so when it comes to your own life when it comes to your personal relationship with God why don't we read for that, why don't we have the books in order to grow our knowledge and our understanding of that as if that's less important? We just need to, in everything that we do, try to learn more, learning more in just learning, learning, more, learning more. And you learn more by reading, essentially. So today we're just talking about reading. So here are four books that I read that, like I said, revolutionized my entire life. The first one is the Benny Hinn. Good morning, Holy Spirit. This revolutionized my relationship with the Holy Spirit because a lot of times we think that he's a ghost or he isn't real or he's not a person, but he is the third the third person in the triune being. And this book really helped me to grow my relationship with him. He was talking about, you know, Benny Hinn is from another nationality. Excuse me. And he... They served another God and how he would spend so much time with the Holy Spirit that he would get in the car with his friends and they just would sense the presence of God on his life. And he would be in his bedroom for hours, hours and hours on end. And he would spend time with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would begin to fill his entire house. And to this day, his entire household is saved and they all live for Christ. And that is amazing. Maybe you may be the only one in your family that has a relationship with Christ. And it just seems like everybody else is going to hell in a handbasket. Let's just be honest. God has, has positioned you to be the Christ in their life, to be the one that's going to help bring them to Christ, show them the love of Christ. So you have a great responsibility, which is awesome. And he tells about how he just spent time with how he spent time with God and the Holy Spirit will help you to bring your families to Christ. He will teach you how to pray to bring your family to Christ, how to love on them, because, you know, the fruits of the spirit help us to know that we have the Holy Spirit. They're evidence of the Holy Spirit. So love, joy, peace, self-control, gentleness, meekness, and those in your life is as a result of the Holy Spirit. So he helps you in all things. He brings all things back to your remembrance. Like this book is just amazing when it comes to just knowing him and loving him and spending time with him and every morning I get up I say good morning Holy Spirit so this book is completely awesome 
The next book I have for you is Battle Plan of Prayer. This is from The War Room. As you can see, I have all of my sticky notes in here because this book was just jam-packed with all kinds of things. As you know, we sometimes pray amiss. We pray and we pray and we pray with our, our hearts are definitely right, but we're not praying the will of God. The first John 5 and 14 says that when you pray my will, know that I hear you. And if you know that I hear you, I will give you what you ask. I will grant that request. But we pray amiss. When they go, when people go to target practice or when they're trying to hit a bullseye, they know exactly what they're trying to hit. This book right here, praying according to the Holy Spirit and as he would have you to pray, will help you to not pray amiss, will help you not to miss the mark. You cannot pray outside of the will of God. If you pray outside of the will of God, the will of God is the the will of God is his language. That's like you going to um France and you're trying to speak English and they're looking at you like it sounds like womp, womp, womp. That's sometimes how we sound to God when we do not pray his will. Yes, you have the right intentions and yes, your heart is in the right place. But pray strategically, pray in purpose, pray intentionally so that you can get the prayers of your heart answered. And when God starts answering your prayers, then you start to pray more. Not saying you pray to get your get what you want. No, absolutely not. But hey, it's one of those things. Praying. Will you will get to start getting answers to your prayers and it will make you want to pray more and make you want to be in the face of God even more. This totally changed the game in my prayer life. Totally, totally changed the game in my prayer life. The next book that I have is Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Myers. Listen, when I came back to God, I was in a complete state of confusion. I felt like sometimes I did not know my name. I thought I was losing my mind and I thought I got amnesia at a young age. Listen, I was confused about everything. I could not keep my mind on a particular thought. I was all over the place, all over the place. And I read this book and I was like, when I was done, I had so much clarity. I had so much clarity. Like it felt like everything that was on my mind had been broken off. The truth will set you free indeed. And I was just in a place of confusion, worry, doubt, uh, feelings of condemnation, I would go to pray to God and I just felt unworthy. I just felt crazy. Like the enemy will plant so many thoughts in your head. You have to get to the place where you uh, pull down every stronghold, any high and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You got to know how to win the battle. You had to know how to win the battle in your mind. If you were like me and you were confused about everything and it felt like you were losing your mind or you may feel like you're losing your mind right now, this book has the plan to beat the enemy at his own game. Beat him at the territory. Beat him at the place where he's trying to take the territory of your mind. The mind is a terrible thing to waste and we will lose it if we don't know how to win it. If we don't know how to go on the enemy's territory and take our land back and take your mind back. Listen, this book was awesome. And as soon as I finished reading this book, I was like, wow, my mind is free. I can think clearly. I can complete my train of thoughts. I'm not losing thoughts in the middle of me speaking. I have so much clarity and I won the battle over my mind and I have authority back over my mind. Amazing. Oh my God. Amazing book. This book, last but not least, I wrote this a long time ago, which I probably need to read it again. But this good book is called Lady in Waiting, Becoming God's Best While Waiting for Mr. Right. And this is not talking about waiting uh, passively when you're just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm waiting for my man. No, this book is like, I'm going to become the one so that I can attract the one and how to become the God ordained woman that God has called you to be. This book, oh my God, was awesome. I know I didn't do this for the other ones, but I would do this for this one. The first chapter in this book is called Lady of Reckless Abandonment. And this book has devotionals, it has prayers, it has places that you can write, different things like that. But the preface for this book says, is this just another book for singles? No. We believe this book is unique because its emphasis is not on a woman's status, single, married, divorced, or widowed, but on the state of her heart. We want to direct a woman's attention toward the one who really understands the longing of her heart. Too many women grow up believing that the inconsolable ache in her heart is for a man. To love a man, get married, and then have children is a thought to be the only script that will satisfy her heart's deepest longings. But no man, woman, or child can appease this longing. It can only be satisfied by the ultimate bridegroom of Christ Jesus. 
this book was awesome it helped me to learn how to wait and it has things like lady in waiting a lady of conviction a lady of purity a lady of contentment a lady of security like a lady of devotion like this book was completely awesome and it will help you to break down those unrealistic expectations that we have for men i want to just read um my book look look at the book y'all it's just it's it's falling apart but i just want to read this um part to you it's called the missing puzzle piece and it says you were not created to complete another but to complement Completion is Jesus' responsibility and complimenting is a woman's privilege. A woman not complete in Jesus will be a drain to her husband. Listen, listen, singles, listen. Such a woman will expect her husband to fill the gap that only Jesus can fill. Only the single woman who understands this means of being complete in Jesus is mature enough to be a help meet, to compliment. Not only that, I really love this page too and I want to just tell you what reckless abandonment means. So what is in your alabaster box? Is your box full of fantasies that began as a little girl while listening to and watching fairy tales about an enchantment couple living happily ever after? Have you been, and that was me, a guy told me one time, you live in a fantasy world. And I was just like, sir, that's all I know. I've never seen a real relationship. I've never seen a successful relationship. So all I seen was the ones on TV, the Cosby show and my wife and kids. And that's what I was basing my life on because they looked happy. But that reading this book completely destroyed that unrealistic expectation completely because this was in my alabaster box and I had to get the standards that Christ had. OK, so have you been holding on tightly to your alabaster box of dreams, frantically searching for a man worth breaking your box for? Take your alabaster box to Jesus and break it in his presence, for he's worthy of such an honor. Having responded to your heavenly bride room in such a manner, you can wait with confident assurance that if it be God's will, he will provide you with an earthly bridegroom. And God literally told me that I was going to get married. He literally I had a lot of prophetic words about it. So after I read this book, because I was becoming the one and he could trust me with that information. But this book is completely amazing, amazing book, amazing book. So those are the four books that I wanted to share with you. And I will link all of those in the description below. I don't know if I said this, but when I was talking about Benny Hinn being the only one in his family, I will also link my teaching when I spoke on on Sunday at Youth Sunday about you being the only one in your family that may be saved and how God wants to use you as his Joshua to deliver your family into the good land. So just be remain vigilant, continue to seek God, continue to love God and continue to follow my channel because I will have a lot of things that God has put on my heart that I want to share with you. Um, but these books are completely amazing and I encourage you to uh, go pick them up in your local bookstore and read them and let them trans trans revolutionize your life let this book teach you about the holy spirit and who he is and how to have a relationship with him this book about prayer learn how to pray strategically and see the things that you want in your life as a result of god uh the battlefield of the mind win the battle in your mind win the battle in your mind because i understand like we struggle with that like this book was everything and then being a lady in waiting becoming the one while waiting on god for your for his best and even if it may not be marriage because you may be watching the channel you don't want to get married just becoming the one for god and recklessly abandoning and just loving him and just getting lost it wasn't until i got lost in god that god started telling me you will be married one day that wasn't my concern. I had gotten off of that because I just wanted more and more of Jesus Christ. And it's fulfilling. So don't don't knock it until you try it. Don't say, that girl is crazy. You're talking about I'm not getting married. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, he will satisfy you. He will satisfy you. And God is completely satisfying me. So when my husband come, it's going to be an addition and not just my everything. Right? So I pray that that helped you. I pray that you're going to pick up these books and let's do a discussion on them. If you have any questions or I'll read them with you, if that's what you want me to do, I'm here for you. Help here to help you grow your walk uh, with our Abba, with our God and just love on him while I love on you guys. So thank you for coming back to my channel and I will see you on Tuesday. Bye.